short arms and short legs. So how he came to be in a tree in Annie's nest was a mystery. Well, one day, the wind blew so hard, it blew Annie's untidy nest out of the tree and onto the ground below. Dano scrambled out to have a look around. Well, just then, Mrs. Crocodile waddled out of the river. My baby, she cried delightedly. I've been looking for you everywhere. Where have you been? In Annie's untidy nest on that branch above us, explained Dano. Oh, well, I never thought of looking up there, said Mrs. Crocodile. We belong down here below. Yes, we do, said Dano, smiling a big crocodile smile as he dived into the water beside her. But why was I born in an untidy nest on a branch of a tree far above the ground? He asked. Yes, I wonder why, said Mrs. Crocodile. I'd like to know too, said Annie. But nobody knows, except old Tortoise. See, he was there when it happened. What had happened, Annie's eggs had fallen onto the crocodile's nest. And Annie had picked up a crocodile egg, as well as her own two eggs, and taken them back to her nest. But Tortoise hasn't told anybody yet. Well, nobody's asked him. Raise your hands above your head, clap them one, two, three. Now down below to touch the floor and slowly bend your knees. Up again and stand erect, put your right foot out. Shake your fingers, nod your head and twist yourself about. <laughs> well, I wonder, do you know that little rhyme? I hope you do, because we're going to do it again. I'll show you what you have to do. Now, first of all, you have to raise your arms above your head like this, then clap your hands three times. Now, bring your arms down again, and bring them down below, and bend your knees, touch the floor like that. And up again, nice and straight like that. And put your right foot out, shake your fingers, nod your head, and try to twist them out. Hey, hey, hey. Oh. Yeah, well, come on, let, let, let's do it, because I'm good at this. Yeah. All right. Oh, it's at the time, Zip. Listen, we'll have to say goodbye first. Yeah. It's time to go now. I know. Let's raise our arms above our heads and wave goodbye. <laughs> Bye. Goodbye. Off we go then. Raise your hands above your head. Oh, clap them one, two, and three. chuck stuff all over. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Mr. Ship, it's you. Yeah, it's all the jobs you're doing it. I reckon you're right, but I keeps on finding stuff as I've forgotten I ever had. We do that with our toys. Yeah. I found my pull-along duck last week, but it didn't have any wheels on. <laughs> I don't think as I've got a pull-along duck in this lot. <laughs> <laughs> no, of course not. <laughs> in fact, I don't know what I have got. Now then, what's this here bundle? God heavens, I do believe. What, Mr. Ship? What is it? It's a tent. That's what it is. A tent? Gosh! I thought as I left that on the good ship Gillyflower years ago. Oh, did you have it when you were sailing on the Seven Seas then, Mr. Ship? That's right, Robin. Stowed it under me bunk, I did. But, Mr. Ship, I thought tents were for on land, not on a boat. Oh, well, so they are, my dear. So they are. But I wasn't on the boat all the time. Oh, why, Mr. Ship? Why? Well, we had to stop in ports, didn't we? We had to deliver our cargo and get more fuel and water. Oh, yes. Did you live in the tent when you were in port? Oh, no, Rosie, twerent for that. Now and then, see, so we'd go on a journey right up into the country as we'd sail to. Oh. I remember once we'd sail to a South American port called Paramaribo. Pa Paramaribo? That's right. And me and my mates, we got on a little boat as was sailing up the river Suriname until we came to a great big lake. Oh! Hmm. Lake it was more like the sea itself, it was so big. Oh. And now we gets off the little boat, and we takes our tents and our supplies, and sets off to explore like, gosh! Hmm, all sorts, we seen all sorts. Animals as hangs upside down from the branches. Sloths, they call those. Oh. And kinkajous. <laughs> Little furry monkeys-like, with popping eyes and tails twice as long as their bodies. 
crumbs and ants. Oh, they was everywhere. Ants? Mm hmm. Ants as big as your thumb. Crumbs. Core. <laughs> With big nipping jaws, too, like snippers as they used to snip, snip, to cut big pieces out of leaves. Gosh. Oh. Anyway, when it starts to get dark, we pitches our tents. That means we rig them up like, and lights a fire, cooks our grub, and then we goes to sleep until the morning. Yes. Go on, Mr. Ship. When we wakes up, we finds out that them there ants has come along in the night and snip, snip, cut big holes in our tents. Gosh! <laughs> ha ha! Uh, what's more, they'd snip, snip, eat holes in our socks and all. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're just teasing us, Mr. Ship. Teasing? I am not. <laughs> I bet you are. <laughs> Wow, you just have a look at this here tent then. <laughs> I had to patch it up with all sorts, I did. <clears throat> there, crumbs. Ah, and I'd show you the socks if I still had them. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Ship. Here, I don't suppose as you'd like to have the tent, would you? What? Have it? Well, I shan't be using it again. <laughs> My camping days is over. Oh, Mr. Ship. Ooh, could we? Well, I wouldn't have asked you if you couldn't, my dears. You take it. Gosh, Gosh thanks. thanks. Here, I'll roll it up again for you, eh? And there's tent pegs and poles and ropes and all rolled up inside it. <sighs> oh, great. Wow. Better ask your mum and dad to show you how to rig it, eh? Because I'll have to get this lot away again before it gets dark. Yes, right, Mr. Ship. Thanks again, Mr. Ship. Reckon as you can manage? Yeah, yes, we'll be all right, Mr. Ship. Right. <sighs> Bye, Bye, Mr. Ship. Ship. Bye. Bye-bye, my dears. And look out for them ants. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we will get it pitched, won't we? Please. Yes, yes, all right. Well, I think the best thing to do is to spread it out first. Yeah. Yes, right. OK. Now what? Well, <laughs> I don't think Mr. Ship could have slept in that. Not very well. <laughs> oh, no, it's more like a giant eiderdown than a tent. <laughs> <laughs> hey, there are some sort of stick things here. Ah, those will be the tent poles. Uh, there should be two of them. Yeah, that's right. With a, a sort of a, a little metal rod sticking out at one end. That'll be the top where it fits into the canvas. Yes, that's right. They're to keep the tent up in the middle, so they'll have to be taken inside that lot and fitted into the little holes in the top. Oh, we'll do that. Yeah, come on. Oh. <laughs> oh. I can't see. Ow, look where you're going, Robin. Oh, oh. That, that's it. Oh, oh. <laughs> well, <I'm> on. <laughs> oh. Oh, that was my head. Crumbs. I can't find the holes. Come on, Rosie, I think. Hooray, got it. Yeah, so have I. Right, two, three. Ah. Oh, there, done it. Ooh, looks a bit floppy, doesn't it? <laughs> yes, doesn't it? <laughs> like an elephant with a puncture. An elephant with a puncture, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Dad. Oh, Dad. <laughs> well, now, I think we'll have to stretch the guy ropes now and, and hammer the tent pegs in. Guy ropes? Tent pegs? What, what are, are they? they? Ooh, it's a good job I was in the brownies. Well, the guy ropes hold the tent poles up because they're fastened to them at the top end. Yeah, that's right. And they're fastened to the tent pegs at the bottom. That's it. But where do the tent pegs go? Oh, well, they have to be banged into the ground. Uh, hang on a minute. Uh, ah, here they are. Uh, look, they have a sort of a hook shape carved into the top that you hook the ropes onto. Yes, and a, a spike at the bottom that you bang into the ground. Then you hook the ropes onto the peg and you tighten them up with the runner. Crumbs. Oh, I don't think I understood all that. Well, you'll see soon enough. Ooh, it looks better now. Yes, only the side ropes to do now. Oh, I'll soon do those. Isn't it great? Yeah, I can't wait to have a go at it. I know. Hey, 
I wonder if Tim could ask me what he wanted. And now we can see Oh, yeah, that'd be smashing. Now, what are you two up to? What's all the whispering? You ask her. No, you. Ask her what? Well, could we... Could we? Could, could we, we sleep, sleep in the tent, tent tonight? tonight? Good heavens. Sleep in it? Well, they'd have to have something waterproof on the ground. There's the roof rack cover from the car. Oh, yes. Ooh, does that mean we can? Well... Oh, does it? Well... Yes. Ah, yes. oh, Robbie! But tea first. Right. right. And no complaining if you don't sleep. No, no, we won't, we won't. Honest, whoopee! So, thoroughly excited, Robin and Rosie went into the bucket and spade guest house for tea. It was much later, as the moon shone down from the night sky and the stars twinkled, that Mr. and Mrs. Cockle came out of the house to see if Robin and Rosie were all right in their canvas home for the night. Shh. Yeah, all right. I wonder if they've managed to get to sleep. Maybe they'll want to come back into the... Shh. What? Listen. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, time for bed. Yes. <laughs> if only I could fly. If only I could fly. Then I, a proper bird, would be. In sky I'd float quite free. In a sparrow's nest one spring, a sparrow's egg lay chuckling. And as the frosts were all dispatched, at last the little egg was hatched. The baby sparrow's head poked through, and then his wings and body too. His brand new eyes took their first...